Now, the small North African country of Tunisia is considered a leading exporter of foreign fighters. Analysts estimate up to 7,000 or more of its citizens have joined Islamic State and other militant groups in Iraq, Syria and Libya. A, recent, a great number of them come from uh, Gordon, uh, one of Tunisia's poorest towns located just 30 kilometers from the Libyan border. Lisa Bryant was there and has this report on a rising threat facing Tunisia's young democracy. These are tough times in Ben Guerdan. Tunisia's economic downturn, made worse by last year's terrorist attacks, means people have less money to buy goods imported or smuggled here from neighboring Libya. If there's no trade here, there's nothing. There's no agriculture, no industry. Trade is the only way people can make a living here. That trade ground to a halt a few weeks ago when Libya temporarily closed its borders to stop oil smuggling. The border has since reopened. Smuggled Libyan oil is back. But authorities are more worried about other cross-border traffic, smuggled weapons and jihadist fighters. Tunisia closed its side of the border in March after dozens of Islamic State fighters crossed over from Libya to attack Ben Guerdan. The attack underscores growing fears that Libya's instability may spill over to Tunisia. We have families in this town whose young children are getting attracted to terrorism. I tell young people it's dangerous what they're doing. It won't take them anywhere. It's hard to say what attracts some Ben Guerdan youngsters to terrorism. Unemployment is high, but analysts cite a mix of reasons, including a lack of prospects and religious guidance. Young people going to immigrate are uh, uh, the same who are going to jihad. They are uh, looking for social value. Tunisia is now reinforcing a newly built border wall with Libya. It may help deter terrorists from entering, but it doesn't address the threat from within in places like Ben Guerdan. Lisa Bryant for VOA News, Ben Guerdan, Tunisia.